Okay, so this is going to be a very quick rundown of how to create a subsurface a 2x shader. So uh, we'll just create a sphere. Now we're going to come into the hypershade and we want to create uh, two materials. First of all, we're just going to create um, our subsurface thing. So type in SSS, that'll get our, our subsurface shaders. The one that we're going to be creating and making is this um, MISSS fast shader to underscore X. That's the one that we want to be using. But uh, unfortunately, this does not create all the nodes that we need. So we're just going to create a MSSS fast skin Maya. And you'll notice the difference between these two is that that one there <coughs> is just a shader network, whereas this one has all these different things sort of associated to it. Now, what we also need to do is assign it to a actual um, object over here and you'll notice that turns red and I'll just show you guys the difference between this so if we render that in mental ray um, you can see how it's starting to have a little bit of subsurface on it whereas if we render the uh, the two underscore x shader uh, it has no SSS it's all just falling into shadow so the reason for this is because of these guys the, um, the light map <coughs> And um, there we go. That's the the light map there, and this is the mental ray material. So we need to plug those both into this shader. So let's do that there. I'm going to select both these and just graph the input and the output connections. Now this is after they've been assigned to the geometry, so they have shading groups. So what we can see now is we have a shading group here and a shading group for that one. So let's separate these. There. I'll grab that one, that one, and I'm also going to select the mental ray texture. So I'm selecting all the shading groups now and the mental ray texture and regraphing those. It will give us a few more nodes. So, what we need uh, in our SSS to, un to underscore two shader, which is, I believe, this one here, uh, that's what our thing looks like. So, we've got our light linking happening here. That's it. But we're missing out on all of this stuff. For some reason, my does not create all this stuff, which we really need um, in order to make the subsurface scattering work on this shader, which is the fast shader too. So what we need to do is we need to plug in the, um, the light map and the texture map into this shader. So how do we do that? Well, <coughs> we need to come in here uh, to our actual shader. And in the light map spot, we don't actually put the light map. This is the light map this one here, uh, you would think that it would go straight into the light map slider. It doesn't, it's the texture. Mental ray texture of the light map goes into that one. So drag and drop it. So now that that's connected up, uh, our subsurface shader still won't work. So we've got to come across to the shading group itself. And if you open up the mental ray tab and then come all the way down to the bottom here, we put the subsurface light map into the light map shader. Now when we render that again, just going to bank that, we should get our subsurface working as we can see and it is. Uh, now that's all kind of grainy and stuff like that but we can fix that up in a second. All we're worried about now is that we're getting this subsurface, this ready subsurface effect sort of starting to happen. So I know that this sphere is about one or two units high to start with. So um, that's why it's grainy because it's getting a lot of subsurface. So let's double click on that. By the way, at this stage now that we've hooked up our light map and all these expressions and that, they all get um, automatically assigned uh, to the shader. So we can kind of forget about the light map and everything now and we can actually delete our original uh, skin bar shader. So now all we're worried about is the shader group and the MRSS fast shader. Okay, so the next step on this is uh, we need to add some specular. There's no specular on this map, uh, on this shader. Uh, you'll notice over here there's no specular samples. There's just this specular illumination slot. So the way that we do that is we use uh, MISSS skin specular. It's a shader by itself. So let's select that one. And now what we need to do is click back on the MISS fast shader underscore two to, sorry, yeah, to underscore X. And we put the 
specula into the specular slot. So let's render that again now. There we go, we now have specular. So <coughs> that's good, it's a skin specular. It has two specular passes, uh, which got a first and second, first and the secondary layer of specularity, which is quite nice. Uh, you can also plug this into a reflection map and stuff like that, but that's a little bit more advanced. We can put our bump map into that slot there, so if you've got any bumps or normal maps, that's where we put it. Um, the diffuse illumination is also sort of required because if we change the color of this guy, it's actually affecting the front scatter and the back scatter. And if you don't want, if you want your diffuse color just to operate by itself, and you want to keep the front scatter and the back scatter the same orangey sort of a color, uh, we actually come down to legacy materials. Uh, take off the SSS so there's nothing in there and we need to create um, just a straight Lambert because we just want something that's very basic uh, a basic Lambert sort of a material and we can just take the ambience of both of these down so that's how we do that and then that Lambert material will get plugged into the diffuse illumination slot so we can now put that in there and now our color is actually this color so if we want to make that a greeny cut sort of a color I don't know why you'd make it a bright green but just to, to show you guys this we've got our greeny color but the red of the subsurface is actually still coming through like that um, okay so that's our shader that's pretty much uh, set up that's all the main things uh, we don't use this diffuse color unless you want it to filter through into both of these guys so you can use that if you want the diffuse color to actually affect the front color and the back color by themselves um, of course if you're using 32-bit uh, workflow sorry linear workflow which we all should be we have to gamma correct all of these swatches so make sure you remember to do that um, now it's just a matter of uh, playing around with our subsurface radiuses so the way that this shader works is we have a, um, a thickness so if we put um, if I was to put the weight of this diffuse weight up to one and we'll just take back scatter uh, radius sorry the weight of the back and the front off so now we're just seeing the diffuse let's render that out <coughs> so you see this is just like our typical Lambert shader with the specular highlight on it we could also take the specular off if we wanted to in the weight on that specular node so if you want to take the specular off we can grab that and put its overall weight to zero render that again so we're now just seeing the diffuse good okay come back to our shader let's switch the diffuse off and have a look at just our front scatter so we're just going one and we're going to render this out Now this is what's causing our graininess, is we're blending together with this sort of orangey colour. Um, it's very subsurfaced. That's because we've got a very small one centimetre or two centimetre sphere here. So it's actually light is penetrating 20 centimetres. So that's it's really deep and uh, we'd actually have to bump up our samples if we wanted so much subsurface. But of course, usually uh, objects don't go much more than two or three centimetres. So let's just put this back to two centimetres. And I'm halving all these values. So this is... I'm sorry, I'm reducing them by 10 times. So we're going to one and then to 0.5. And let's hit this. Now we're seeing we're getting a much better sort of an effect. It's still a little bit higher, so we could put up the samples there. Um, but we're get, definitely getting less grain than we, than we were before. So um, what, are, what are these three values here? So we've got our weight, which is, you know, how strong the, the front scatter is going to be affecting this object at the moment. It's at one, which means it's completely affecting it and everything else is set to zero. So we've got nothing coming through. Um, now this is the red, green and blue channels. And that's how far red light is traveling. So red light is going to be traveling much further through this object. And you sort of see here, it's a bit hard. There's actually, um, uh, the red will affect sort of the deeper areas. So the deeper your object is, or the thicker, the more red will come through. Um, and this this is particularly more noticeable when we've got other sorts of shaders, like more of a yellowy sort of a shader. So let's try this. Render it. 
um, and you can see that there's more red occurring sort of around this area and that's because the light's bouncing in and bouncing around and then the red is traveling further and that's sort of what in the old skin shaders the uh, epidermal layer would do or the subdermal um, the deeper the, the the level the more red it is well the way that this saber sh shader solves that is much more got to do with um, how light actually works and the red rays actually just travel further so this is two centimeters one centimeter and half a centimeter and the same goes for the backscatter now we've got no backlight in here so you'd have to put the backlight in but if that was to affect our object we'd switch all this down to the similar and uh, you'll see that much more clearly but this is just a quick tutorial that I'm doing up just to show you how to set up this shader so I'm going to leave it there have a play around with it that's certainly how to get started